from page 7, from ayah, I'm sorry, um, 7 to ayah 17 is the wrongdoer, the evildoer. Wrongdoer, evildoer, the disbelievers. What will they get? Interesting, and this is something I want one of you, all of you, but I want you to write it for me right now. From ayah 18, okay, to the end of the surah, which is ayah 36. So from ayah 18 to ayah 36, which is about 18 ayat. So we had one to six explaining the concept of tatrif, defraud, defraud, unjust, one to six. And then from seven to 17, so that's 10 ayat, it's the those who are the defrauder, and not only the defrauder, but actually transgressors, wrongdoer. So 10 ayat about the wrongdoer. 18 ayat, 18 ayat about the righteous. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat us in the concept of tatrif. In, even in his book, in the concept of tatrif, when it comes to the punishment and fear and what is going to happen for those wrongdoers, it's 10, ten ayat, five lines. But when it comes to the good news, to the generosity of Allah, what we will get, 18. It's almost, it's almost half of this page in one ayah. That's, that's a hidden concept, hidden clue, how, we, how generous is Allah. Generosity is against tatrif. So you all have now, remember, anytime you do an act of generosity, even if the person in front of you is generous, and you responded with generosity, then you are safe from this tafrif. So here you go, look at the generosity of Allah. So the first thing I'm gonna say, when Allah talks about the, el, el, the righteous people, when Allah talks about the righteous people, the first thing he's reminding me and you, that the first thing he is reminding me and you, that generosity, generosity is what is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, showing it to me. No concept of tatfif in even the numbers of the ayat. Something hidden. This is something subtle. But you always, again, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you read and read and read again, inshallah, then you're going to start, Allah will open doors. And if you remember, some of you may not, or if you want to listen to it, it's actually out there. When we said, why don't I understand the Quran? And the first concept of why I don't understand the Quran, I need to learn and remind myself that the Quran is an ocean. And every time I go one layer deeper, I will see more. And the beauty is in every level. So the first beauty is when I see an ocean and I am standing there on the shore, I'll see the beauty and I say, subhanAllah. Then if I'm going to go snorkeling one, just a little bit, then I'm going to see beauty. And I'm going to come out and tell the person who is on the shore, you didn't see anything. This is just external. Then if someone goes diving a little bit deeper, comes out and tell the person who did snorkeling, you did see just the, just the basics of beauty, go down and see. And the person who goes deep diving will say the same to the person with the superficial diving, snorkeling and standing on the shore. You guys saw nothing. Real beauty is deep. The more deeper I indulge in the Quran, indulge, I use the word indulge purposefully, indulge, give it more time eat more of it, think more of it, ask Allah to give you more, you will see more. So the first thing is, is the number of the ayat. Here is a sign of generosity, much more. Two, very common concept in the Quran, all of us, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, inshallah, will learn, is the peers, um, the peer theory, not the, or the, the, I'm sorry, not theory, the peer principle, meaning, Almost always, Allah, when He talks about Jannah, there is Nar. When He talks about Paradise, there is going to be Hellfire. When He talks about the righteous, there is going to be the wrongdoers. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, sometimes one ayah, sometimes just one word. But this concept of Zumar, the two groups. And in His creation, there is a Shams al Qamar. There is the sun, there is the moon. There is a lay, the night, there is the day. This group, because this is my life. My life is almost always, and Allah created us in pairs. 
So here you go, when he start talking about number one, the wrongdoers, another point you pay attention. Because sometimes, I mean, a lot of times now it's coming to my mind, he actually talks about al-abarar, the righteous people first. Or he talks about jannah, uh, paradise first. In al-mutafifin, because the emphasis on unjust, although it is hidden, the first thing when you're reading the ayah, you will read about the wrongdoer and their punishment. Then comes into, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ 